Hello, I am Gabrielle Blake, and I am a licensed clinical social worker with Franklin and Kyle Elder Law. And I'm so happy that Susan invited me to come and talk to you remotely about preparing for the holidays. And what an interesting holiday season it is looking to be this year. Uh, it has been a very challenging year for lots of people. And so I think as we enter into the holiday season, now is a really good time to get a plan together and do some ways of thinking about what your priorities are and how you can go from just surviving the holiday season to thriving during this holiday season. So thank you very much for having me here. All right, the holidays, they're here. I know we, we thought that 2020 was really going at a snail's pace. It was taking forever to get through that early spring and the challenges of summer and then lickety split, here we are right at the holiday season. It's, it's just amazing how fast that happened. And normally the holiday seasons can even have a little bit of stress and a little bit of challenges for us. But I think this year with the aftermath of the pandemic, maybe many people are kind of looking at the holiday season and saying, I'm just really not sure what it's gonna be like this year. So I want you to be thinking about what are the things about the holiday season that normally bring you joy and normally are the things that you look forward to. And we are going to be talking today about how you can make some adjustments to those based upon what we are facing with the pandemic. All right, surviving to thriving. Really, that's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Social workers often talk about the, the Chinese symbol for crisis and opportunity are the same exact symbol. And it really just affects how we look at it. So as we look ahead to the holiday season, we can make a choice. We can look at, okay, well, I lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do for buying the kids gifts. I'm stressed. I'm not going to be able to see my family. All of those things are probably still true. But we can also be very intentional with our focus and say, okay, that may be true, but what is the other side of the coin? What are the things that I'm looking forward to? What are the things that I can still celebrate? And, and what are my values that I can still relate to this holiday season in spite of all the other stuff going on? So as we talk today, we're going to kind of go through this step by step. The first step is to get a plan as you prioritize your kind of bucket list for the holiday season. Then we're going to look at using tools like our calendar and our shopping list to make it go a little bit easier. We're going to talk a little bit about family dynamics, which I know are everyone's favorite topic to discuss, right? And ways to give back even in spite of everything that we're going through. And then last, but certainly not least, is self-care. I really want you to make time for yourself this holiday season. And I think for many people, probably especially for women, it's really hard for us to prioritize ourselves. We, you know, I will look at my calendar throughout the week and I will have everyone else prioritize. And then all of a sudden it's like, when did I take time for myself? So we're going to talk about that today too. Okay, so if you have a pad of paper and a pencil handy, I want you to start just kind of writing down some of the things that you love about the holiday season. What are your must do's? We kind of call this your holiday bucket list. And I included on the screen a picture of gingerbread men because for me and my family, that is always on my bucket list. Reminds me of a time in my childhood where a very sweet neighbor taught me how to make gingerbread men. And even in some of the most trying years of our family's lives, I have made time to do this with our kids. So I know that's one thing I absolutely want to do. So I want you to look at your really important things that you want to do. And then 
I want you to get a little creative about how can I make those things happen or make some adjustments to those things in spite of the pandemic. So an example of that, we've got Thanksgiving right around the corner and my family, we love to go and we love to see my in-laws and we travel to different states. So one time we'll have it over in Indiana and one time we'll have it in Ohio and we kind of have a rotating Thanksgiving. This year, it's probably not gonna be safe for us to do those travels. So we had to kind of think, well, how can we make this work? Well, just the same way you're watching me today, we have these virtual options. So we decided we're gonna to get together at the same time while we're eating Thanksgiving dinner, we're going to visit together and we even have plans on playing a bingo game together. Is it the same? No, it's not gonna be the same. But is it still honoring the thing that's really important on that bucket list, which is being with family? Absolutely. So find ways to get creative with that this holiday season. And talk about it with your family. Make sure you get other people involved in this. Because what may be a real important priority for me may not be for other people. So we need to kind of work together as a team to make that happen. And if you did not add your list, yourself to your list, I want you to do that. I want you to think about really incorporating into your schedule time to, to take for you. Um, again, sometimes we will prioritize everyone else and we'll make sure, well, okay, my, my daughter wants to do this thing and I have to do this for my neighbor. And then does Gabrielle get to do the things that she wants to do? Make sure you add yourself to that priority list too. Get a plan. So Christmas, I, I know this is brand new information for you, but Christmas is December 25th, right? Every single year. And yet every single year, my sister, whom I love so much, but every single year she is surprised that Christmas has rolled around. And part of it is because she's a school teacher and she's sort of wrapped up with all of those things. But all of a sudden, the last couple of days before Christmas, she has to do her shopping and her groceries and her meal planning and wrapping and all of those things. So instead, I want you right this week to get out your calendar and look ahead. Include things like, okay, the kids have pajama day, that last half day of school. Every year I forget about pajama day and every year we're running around trying to find our favorite pajamas for that morning. Even little things like that, be sure to include in your calendar because that's going to help to reduce the stress. If we're looking ahead and we know, okay, well, I know that I need to make my shopping list for my Christmas dinner. Well, this week I'm going to make sure that I'm going to buy those that turkey because it's on sale and I'm gonna make sure that I have it. Having that plan lets us look ahead and it reduces a lot of the stress. Now, I want you to also think when you're planning about what is your budget? Who do you absolutely have on your list to buy shopping, to buy Christmas gifts for, or holiday gifts for? And what is the budget for that? Normally when I have this talk, I say shop the bargains, do look at all of the great sale racks and get those great deals and great discounts. But if you're like me, many of us have not been in the store shopping like we would. Maybe that's because of the pandemic, maybe that's because of the economics, it's been a stressful year economically. So I want you to think about what are the things that I absolutely really want to make sure that I'm buying for. And we're going to talk about creative gift ideas in a little bit, but you, you may not have $15 to buy for a gift this year. It may be a $5 gift this year. Be realistic with your budget. And then delegate, delegate, delegate. It's no fun for anyone when 
the host or the mama is completely stressed out because she's done everything herself. Older kids can help wrap presents. My teenage daughter is just really great with cooking. This year, she's going to be making some of the foods for our holiday meals. Get them involved, too. It's also teaching life skills. Now, gift giving. We all love to see people's faces when they've opened up a special gift and we just know they love it. It's like, oh, yes, I got that right. This year may be a little different. We may have to be a little bit more creative with gifts. And I will tell you, for our family, this year, probably more than any other year, we're going to be making a lot of our holiday gifts. And I have on the screen a picture of an ornament that I made when our eldest daughter was probably about three years old. It's a beautiful glass ornament. It costs maybe at the most 25 cents, 50 cents. Got them on sale at Hobby Lobby, took some little leftover paint in there, swirled it around, let it dry. And I will tell you, family members love that more than anything else that I got them from the store. So think about what your talents are. Maybe it's your, you make a really great banana bread and you, you wrap that up and you give that to family members. Maybe you're also giving experiences instead of gifts. One of the things that I love that my aunt did for me a few years ago is she took a lot of the cherished family recipes and she wrote them all down and put them together and gave them to each of us for Christmas gifts. So think about ways to get creative with that. And that's sort of an experience because I have those recipes. It costs very little money to do. And it's something that I'm going to cherish again more than something that she probably bought me at, at a store. Family dynamics. That's the most interesting part of the holiday season for for many families. A lot of us are blending families together. Sometimes we are at a different place than our loved ones when it comes to trying to kind of get our lives in order and kind of be more assertive. It's, it's sometimes difficult to know exactly how to navigate through those waters. The pandemic, if anything, is going to probably help to make this part a little easier because all of a sudden we have an excuse to not necessarily be around those people that are difficult to be around. We can use the example of saying, I'm really trying to social distance, so I'm going to make my visit really short this year. It, if it works, that's great. You know, we can, we can use those things as examples but also walk into those situations with your expectations checked. I know that sometimes I will walk into a situation thinking exactly how it's gonna happen and sort of planning on it. Everyone's carrying a burden we don't see. So try as much as you can to use your healthy assertive skills, use your healthy boundaries, and also to give grace. 2020 has been a challenging year for a lot of people in a lot of ways. And we're probably gonna see that stress come out in the holidays as we're talking to family members and friends. So give that grace and also be willing to compromise. Be willing to, to sort of meet people in the middle when you can. I know that Susan talks a lot in her classes about assertiveness skills and boundaries. So if anything, this is probably a recap for you. Make time this holiday season to give back. There have been all sorts of studies on people who find ways to volunteer, find ways to have um, altruistic activities, if you were. That means that when I give, I also get something back in that experience. We know that it makes us happier. It makes us to feel better when we are able to give something to someone else. 
Now, it may not be that you're going and visiting someone in a nursing home because the nursing homes may still be kind of closed down. But it might be that you can call a friend or a neighbor who you know has had some challenges this year and just check in on them. It might be that you get the kids together and you fold over a sheet of paper and you have them draw a card and you send that to a senior. It might be that you work within your faith organization, your faith, your house of worship to say, what are some opportunities for giving back? The other really great thing about being involved with the CAC and the Office on Aging and the other organizations there is that there's a lot of different ways that you might be able to help someone else in need. So think about that way. And, and you might even involve this in your gifts. A few weeks ago, my aunt had a birthday and instead of sending her something that she did not need, I bought a few craft supplies and we brought them down to the Daily Living Center for them to use. And it didn't cost very much money. It was something that she really loved, that it touched her and it, it made a difference in her and it helped someone else too. So you can even find ways to do that. The picture here is a vase of, or it's a mug with flowers from Random Acts of Flowers because I love to do volunteer work with them. It's not something that takes a lot of time. It's not something that costs any money and it's a way to really help me as well. It's kind of my me time and my self-care. Speaking of self-care, I told you that I really want you to prioritize yourself this holiday season. The pandemic has caused a lot of us to see more anxiety, more stress, more of a sense of loneliness. And that is hard. And it's especially hard as we enter into the winter months where we're cooped up more. We may not be able to see family like we want to. Now is the perfect time to take time for you. When social workers look at self-care, we look at it with the mind, the body, and the spirit. And it's called a systems approach. It means that when one part of the system, when we do something for the mind, guess what? We also help the body and the spirit. When we do something for the body, we also help the mind and the spirit. It's just like if you know, the, the planets in our solar system, if one of them goes a whack, the other ones do too. So if we are noticing that we're feeling more stressed or more anxious in our mind, maybe we take some time to help our body and our spirit, okay? Again, we've got that calendar out and I want you each week between now and January 1st, every week to write something in your calendar that you're doing for each of these parts of you for you. Taking care of your body. It can be as simple as taking a walk around the block. It does not have to be that you're going and joining a fancy gym or buying fancy yoga pants or any of that stuff. It can be very simple. There's even studies that show even just sitting outside, how that can help us with all sorts of things. It can help lower our blood pressure. It can help us to feel a more positive sense of self, all sorts of things. So you don't have to think that these goals have to be something outlandish. Make it simple. Make it simple enough so that you do it. And I know it's cold, but it's still, you know, it's still East Tennessee, so it's not so cold that we can't be outside a little bit. The one thing on this bullet point that I include that I really think we all need to pay attention to is monitoring our habits. When we are experiencing times of stress, we tend to go to those things that we use as crutches to help us feel better. Hello, Oreo cookies. Hello, coffee. 
you know, all of those things makes me feel better for a little while, but did eating a sleeve of those Oreo cookies help me long-term? Probably not. Okay. So I'm going to feel good for a little while. And then I'm going to be like, why on earth did I eat all of those Oreo cookies? We can also monitor how much alcohol we're drinking. If we're relying on things like painkillers, even shopping can be a crutch. So really pay attention to those because those can be a warning sign that we need to make a change to do something different. And I think many of us have experienced that during the time of isolation. Taking care of your mind. I included here a little picture of a, a teapot because one of my favorite rituals for just de-stressing is the act of boiling the water and making a beautiful cup of tea in the afternoon. Sorry, my video came out for just a little bit, but it does not have to be some grand ritual that you're doing. A little bit of tea costs very little money, and it is a nice way to just say, I'm just going to take a little break just for me. It can also be that you're doing some deep breathing. It can be that you're writing things down in a journal. It can be that you're painting. Whatever feels good for you emotionally, I want you to take time to do that. Also, find ways to connect with others. It might be that you need to look at your calendar and say, okay, this week I'm going to reach out to Aunt Sally. Next week, I'm going to give a call to Uncle Fred or I'm going to call my sister. The interesting thing about the telephone is it works both ways, right? And I remember like this summer going, no one's calling me. Why is no one calling me? Why is no one checking on me? And my husband said, well, why don't you call them? And it was like, don't tell me something I already know, you know? Okay, absolutely, I need to be calling them. So finding ways to connect with others, especially when the holiday season is coming, is, is a really important thing to do. And last but not least, take time for your spirit. And spirituality and spiritual growth means different things to every single person. It's, it's individual. So I want you to reflect on what feels good to you spiritually. For me, one of the things that I will do is just take a little bit of time for some deep breathing, some a little bit of time to kind of do a meditation. And when you meditate, you don't have to sit cross-legged and go, oh, you know, prayer is meditation. A nature walk can be meditation. Doing art can be meditative but find ways to take care of your spirit. Holiday season can be a good time for that because there's lots of holidays that revolve around spiritual growth. Find ways to make that work for you. Um, okay, questions. You will be able to see this video. You'll be able to have the PowerPoint, but I've also included my email address there. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and if you have any other questions or follow-ups, I encourage you to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help in any way that I can. So in conclusion, get your bucket list together. Think about your priorities. Get creative on finding ways to make those happen with the pandemic. Get your calendar and make a plan so that you're not surprised like my sister is. Oh my goodness, it's December 25th. Then look at ways to navigate through the, the family dynamics and all of those things that we've talked about today. But most importantly, and the easiest one to forget is take time for self-care. I wish you a very, very happy holiday season. And I hope each of you will go from just surviving to feeling like you're thriving this holiday. Thank you.